I really love learning at Wesley School because, like, technology. We go by the Naikalani Learn Create Share model, which is very visible on our site, and we use it when we're doing our collaborative planning as a basis to form our activities and what we're doing. We have blogs that the kids have as well that connects us across the Naikalani, in fact, across all the world actually, um, but we have many classes that will come from other schools and comment on the work. Um, we do things online, like um, we have, um, when it was like lockdown, we had activities to do and um, we'd always have Google Meets to talk like with the teachers instead of in real life, like distance yeah. learning. We have learning slides on our site and within that we have a contents page so that it's a two click easy process to find what you're after. You don't have to go through millions of pages or information to find it. It's all really visible and right there. We had different challenges like rocket challenges, cooking, like yeah. teaching them how to cook, um, drawing and um, origami stuff and yeah. So if that's for example it's week four of term four, so you would see our STEAM title and you could click that and it would take you to the STEAM learning in the focus. You would see our inquiry, our mathematics, our writing. At the moment we're testing so you'll see that on there too. <laughs> um, how we discover like what we learn each week is we have like these type of slides that um, our teachers they write down the plans for the week and sometimes when we are at home we get to check it out and um, it gets us really excited. And you'll see upcoming events for the week, just as a reminder to kids in Fano what's coming up. Good reminder to us as well, because it can get busy in term four. I love learning at Wesley, um, because um, I get so much um, cool opportunities to like do some challenges, or I'll go outside of school on trips, and like I think that, that is kind of like my personality. I get excited when I like, get offered opportunities. Uh, we're part of a community of learning and so we collaborate across a lot of schools and we've recently had high school students in to work with our students to do rockets and we've also gone out to an intermediate, co fly intermediate and done micro bits with them. Sometimes it has different things like we haven't learned before or like if we go somewhere and we like learn like micro bits, it's sometimes on our um, slides. We plan and update our sites every Thursday morning so the children can have a look on Friday and see the following week. We do skip the slides but the kids do know that it's there if they wanted to see it and then we make it visible from the Monday morning of that week. I guess the main way that works is you have your learning sites um, but the greatest like visibility or like access across the whole school um, is through like our curriculum and so that's like all being on the same page around how learning happens, how kids get engaged. So we plan together and we talk about the focuses and then we all have separate workshops that the children can opt in and out to and these are all visible on the site as well so the kids can have a look at what's coming up for the next week and kind of have an idea of what they might like to go with. Um, and quite often when a reliever comes in it's super easy to know where there's like a sticking point um, so if someone does you know, can't make it there for the day or, yeah, you see it especially in the teams. Um, they're quite responsive to each other. They, do, they know their own roles and they know each other's roles. Um, and it's, yeah, it's easy to jump in and support them. We, as teachers, have been taking part in digital fluency intensive training. And through that, we've been taking that back to our classroom. And so we've been upskilling ourselves so that we can help empower them. So through our Akahiko cluster, if you are a new teacher in the school and you're new to a one-to-one -one classroom, you can get one hour a week of professional development where someone will come into your class and they will model cyber smart lessons for you. And it's not just upskilling you, but it's upskilling your kids as well and I have to say half the time the kids will teach you something that you didn't know rather than the other way around so yeah. I think it's really important that when we talk about one-to-one -one digital classrooms sometimes people paint the picture that children are always on their Chromebook which is not the case at all. Sometimes we get to do like when we have free time we can build and um, we have these things called Makey Makey and we use them in, in STEAM. We can use Play-Doh and like you can connect it with other things to, um, yeah, but mostly some things are with our Chromebooks. The Chromebooks there is a tool to empower their learning. It's a way that they can share with a wider audience, including their fauna, and it's also a way that they can explore other things without in the world that we might not have access to at school. So it's a resource, it's like a third teacher as well. The different activities we've been doing was building like windmills on Minecraft, and um, we just watched a video about it, and it was like, so I was so amazed and he was like 19 years old 
and he was living like in a house but it was like kind of creative and there's that miscon um conception that children are playing the games when in fact it's actually used to enhance the learning and the thinking and the logical thinking, design thinking behind what they're doing is really important for them.